Welcome, friends, to the Monday Manifest. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Monday Manifest. So, um, I do have a topic today. It's, I don't know, like, I, I don't have all of the knowledge on the things that I'm talking about, so I'm only going to talk about, like, some of the ones that I've played and stuff like that. But basically, today's topic is Silent Hill, because it's a series that I very much like, but I also recently um, released a VOD of me playing one of the games that I have a great dislike for, for various reasons, mostly because it is not... It has the Silent Hill name, but it really doesn't feel like a Silent Hill game, even if it has some of the common enemies and one particular enemy that really doesn't... It shouldn't exist in that game because of the way the games work and all that. But, um, yeah. So, um, those of you that follow me on Twitch or have, uh, seen the various YouTube videos I've put up might have seen that recently. I, uh, put up, like, about a five-hour video of me playing Silent Hill Homecoming, a game that I attempted to play years ago, and, and I, God, my save file was from, like, 2013, so it's been almost seven years since I played it. I didn't beat it because I got stuck on one part, but also because I think I just got so, like, annoyed with it that I didn't want to deal with it. Um, the biggest thing to me that Homecoming really kind of fucked up on is they tried to turn it into a very combat-based game, which I did not enjoy. I mean, the addition of the health meter was already kind of, like, a weird thing because, granted, in Silent Hill 4 you had a health meter, but it was, you know, they didn't really expect you to just fight everything. Granted, in every Silent Hill, there's usually bosses and stuff like that, but those are specific, like, story events, rather than Homecoming forces you to kill enemies to advance in certain places, and then there's bosses, and it's like, but that, no. Also, there's a, a combat system that's integrated that isn't very... The controls aren't very good. Like, granted, I'm just not, I'm also not very good at it, but I can tell when something is badly controlled, on top of me not being very skilled with it, and it's homecoming, there's a lot of camera angle issues, the dodging, just enemies kind of not paying attention to the fact that you're hitting them, you know, other random things like that. So far, I haven't been killed by an insta-death move, even though they've attempted it many times, but that was another thing I don't like. I don't like instant death moves in games, because they feel like kind of a cop-out sometimes, like adding quick time events. Like, I... <laughs> I liked it when, you know, Silent Hill was just um, creepy stuff about exploration and learning the history behind Silent Hill and other stuff. Like, obviously, there's still lore and stuff in that game, but one of the big things that gets me that I can tell was just, like, a throwback to try to get people to enjoy it more is the fact that Pyramid Head shows up in Silent Hill Homecoming. And anybody who knows anything about Silent Hill, granted, I don't know, like the in-depth lore and all that, but Pyramid Head is uh, not supposed to be there because he's not actually a part of that specific game. Because, you know, in each Silent Hill, everybody has their own, like, nightmares and stuff like that manifest and all that. And in Silent Hill 2, that's James's whole thing, is Pyramid Head. And yeah, and he doesn't show up in any of the other games. But for some reason, he shows up at Homecoming. He does show up in the movie, but I mean, come on, it's the movie. Of course they're going to throw him in there because... People know him, and that's how you do stuff in movies, I guess. I don't know. The movies were all right. It could have definitely been better, but compared to other game movies that came out, they were definitely uh, on the higher end of the list. That's my opinion, though. If you didn't like them, I, whatever. You didn't like them. That's cool. Like, Silent Hill 1, um, I've played through, and while I enjoy the story, I will admit it has not aged well because the controls are trash. Like... But, I mean, they, they were working with what they had on the PlayStation and all that, so they had tank controls. If you don't know what tank controls are, that's where your character can only move forward and backward and pivot. Which, you know, a lot of horror games use, like Resident Evil and or the first Silent Hill and stuff like that. It's just, they're a pain in the ass, especially if you're in, like, a corridor or something. One of the things I really hate about Silent Hill is going through the school, because literally all it is is long, dark corridors, and I also I hate those children because they're very hard to kill. And then they latch onto you and stab you, and you know, it's just, it's not a good time. But, like, Silent Hill 1 was really good in, in the regard that the, the story was very much in-depth. There were multiple endings, there's the good ending, the not-so-good ending, a bad ending, all that stuff. There's always usually, like, a joke ending, though I don't generally go for that very often. 
but um my favorite of the series would have to be silent hill 2 because i don't know i just i really like the way that it controlled and everything i like the story and all that um you know pyramid head was cool it, it's just like it was a huge step up from the first one in, in terms of controls and all that and the story was still good you still learn more stuff about the city and about james and all that third one was also very good it was very well done the controls were done very well the um the ambient sounds were really good, especially if you're wearing headphones, because when you're going through the mall or the hotel or anything, there were lots of times where there were, because generally, you know, when you hear sounds in horror games, you just need to be, like, on alert. But those sounds would generally come out of nowhere during um, Silent Hill 3. And, yeah, so you'd be like, did something cause that? Or did anybody else hear this? Or I, I don't really know. But, yeah. Like, ambient sound, everything, the way it looked, the, the story, everything was really good. Silent Hill 4. Oh, that one started off kind of strong. I gotta say, the first person perspective in the room kind of weirded me out. And then I was like, yeah, it's a, it's a central mechanic. You go to the room to heal, to do stuff, to exercise random ghosts that show up there. I think you're not really supposed to go back there too often, other than, like, for story-based stuff, because... I believe that causes it to become more haunted. I'm not really sure. I just know I got the bad ending because um, I used all of my items, all of my purification items to cleanse my apartment, and then I had absolutely none for the part of the game that is arguably the worst, which is the like the last quarter of the game. Maybe it's not quite that much, but a huge part of the game in the end game is an escort quest. Or escort quest, like escort mission, basically. And if this person gets too far away from you, they keep... Well, I think they're gradually getting corrupted anyway. If they get too far away, they get more corrupted. If they get attacked, they get more corrupted. And there's there's a lot of shit. And you can reduce that, but... I don't know. I just... Probably from a, a combo of item management, like, bad shit and other shit. I just was not very good at that. And that person ended up dying, like, immediately. Because depending on how corrupted they are... um. It, it, it changes a mechanic later on in the final boss fight, and yeah, she just, they, they totally fucking died. It was pretty bad, and I was like, well, I got the bad ending, because I don't really know how I'll, how to do stuff different. Plus the ghosts, uh, there was one part where I was just pissed off, because um, you get the sword that you're supposed to use to stab the ghost into the ground. This is a few different ghosts, there's a few different swords, and that keeps them from, you know, following you and being a nuisance but for whatever reason one of them just would like would not stick to the ground and i ended up wasting a lot of like hell stuff and just a lot of time in general it sucked yeah it wasn't fun but i still overall the game i was like okay yeah this is a silent hill game uh i haven't played downpour i know that the items or the weapons are breakable in there or yeah like all like the weapons have durability and i'm like okay well that's interesting which kind of makes me think of another game that I was playing, which is... Uh, I don't even know why I'm mentioning this one, because most people probably don't know about it. But if you were a Vita owner, or maybe even if you weren't a Vita owner, if you're just into Sony a lot, you might know about um, the... Oh, God, Silent Hill... Like, Book of Memories, I think? Is that what it's called? Let me, let me look. Book of Memories, yeah. It's a co-op Silent Hill game, which is already very strange because that's not usually how they work, but you actually choose, like, a class, and you can level up, and you're basically... You're going deeper into this nightmare to figure out stuff that's at the bottom, but it really... It's literally... That one is definitely, like, very combat-based because you have to kill everything, but the combat still works better than Homecoming because at least it's not, like horribly difficult or like just really badly done like it's very basic but yeah i haven't beaten that one either i don't think i'd play that on stream because it would be boring because you're literally just like going through clearing a floor and floor of monsters and it really doesn't feel like silent hill other than like some of the artwork and stuff but yeah one of the ones i do want to play is um silent hill origins which i think was on the the vita or psp or ps2 i don't know I think it was like a remade version of the first one or like prequel. I am not really sure, but I do want to check that one out at some point because I've heard good things. Um, like I've heard better things about Downpour because I think Downpour is still more Silent Hill than Homecoming. But Homecoming, 
definitely my least favorite of the series so far. Um, because a lot of people say it's because the I, I think they they lost like one of the main writers or something for Silent Hill, and then it just kind of went downhill. And then you know there was PT, which was planned, and then went down the tubes. Even though that demo is probably one of the most terrifying things I had played like before because most scary games i actually just get annoyed at like outlast i still need to play through that in the second one um i played amnesia i wasn't really scared i was just annoyed because it was really horribly dark like unplayably dark like there was a lot of me just not knowing where to go because it was so dark but um but yeah and that's uh that kind of wraps it up for this because yeah i mean there's I'm trying to think if there's any other oh wait shattered memories totally forgot about that one sorry one more to go through, because this one I've actually played through, and I, I've watched, I always mention this a lot, I watch Game Grumps a lot, and I've watched their playthrough of Shattered Memories many times, because it amuses me when Dan screams at every monster coming out, and also, they, it's just, I don't know, it's a really fun watch, to be honest, like, their dynamic's really good. But, uh, Shattered Memories, I really enjoyed that one, because, that's the other thing, Homecoming has, like, no puzzles. Or if they have puzzles, they're very basic puzzles. Like, generally, um, whenever you start a Silent Hill game, there's two options for difficulty. Options for the monster difficulty, and options for the puzzle difficulty. The only difficulty option in Homecoming is normal or hard for combat. Like, nothing about puzzles. And every puzzle is basically just a grab this to do this and do this. And one part, like at the beginning, you have to drain the basement so you can unlock a bar lock at the bottom of the door when it would be super easy just to lean down put your hand in the water and open the lock so it's like it's it's a puzzle that doesn't make any sense and it's not even a puzzle you just have to walk over somewhere find some shit and then go back down and start up this this pump and i'm just like man this feels kind of like a waste of time but yeah most of the puzzles are like not really actually puzzles like nothing that that's really that hard to figure out but uh yeah and i like shattered memories because i had a lot of puzzles and stuff and even though you couldn't fight stuff it still felt like a silent hill game because you were still learning about the past of the character and 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 getting more in, in depth in silent hill itself like there was a lot of lore in that game and and really the aim of any silent hill isn't really even to like kill monsters like, you can. It, it's one of those things where you kill them if they get in the way or something, or if you just need to get past them. But, honestly, like, you could run past almost every monster in a Silent Hill game, and it's, it, it wouldn't affect you negatively. It's just... I don't know. Oh yeah, that's the other thing, Homecoming. Ammo is... Soup, for a combat-oriented game, ammo is ridiculously limited. You can hold 27 handgun bullets, which is not a lot at all and i think like 12 shotgun shells i never got anything past that i don't know if there's a hunting rifle but it's just like if you're gonna make it a combat oriented game don't fucking limit the ammunition like yeah i get it there's not a whole lot on the ground either but i don't want to be maxed out on ammo i want to make sure that i'm safe but yeah like i said uh, shattered memories really good really emotionally compelling as well like it's it's a very good game i I need to get it again because I want to play it on stream because uh, it's been a while since I played it. Uh, and like I said, I watched the Grumps play through it and all that, but pff, I mean, it's different than playing through yourself, you know, and I would definitely want to experience that with everyone. But yeah, that's my take on, uh, I, I guess I was just discussing Silent Hill, but basically Homecoming kind of sucks. Don't know about Downpour. I really love one, but the controls did not age very well at all. Absolutely love to controls are good enemies aren't too like crazy or anything like that. There's a lot of lore three has really good uh, It looks really good. It sounds good. It, it plays very well There's a lot of story there and um, Like the different areas that you go to and all that like they they were really good at the uh, ambient sounds and everything like that and then um, Silent Hill 4 started out really strong for me and then I just I don't know. I probably just have to get better at item management. I don't think I was even playing it at a higher difficulty, but it just, I don't know. It just was like fairly difficult towards the end, but it might have just, I might have just needed to make a couple of decisions that were slightly better with like inventory or the swords or something. I'm not really sure. 
but yeah. But yeah, thank you for coming here and hanging out uh, on this Monday Manifest. I, I know this wasn't a super long one. I, I don't know how interesting it's going to be to you hearing my opinion on these things. But overall, I would highly recommend the Silent Hill series. One through four, for sure. And Shattered Memories, if you can get your hands on it. The other ones, I don't really have enough information. Book of Memories, you can only play if you have a Vita. And I don't know how many people actually still have Vitas. I have mine just because I haven't sold it. But I can't really uh, play it on stream or anything. Like, I have my PSTV, so. We'll see. Um, like, shit. You could probably get... Uh, you could probably get Homecoming for super cheap somewhere if you want to try it. I didn't like it, but if you're into more combat-oriented stuff, maybe you'll like it. It's just, I, I don't know, it doesn't feel as Silent Hill to me as the previous version. But yeah, that's my spiel on it. Um, I would say, as like a little uh, interactive type thing, I guess, put in the comments below what your favorite Silent Hill game is, or... What your favorite horror game is overall, I guess. Like, if you don't really care about Silent Hill or if Silent Hill isn't one of them. So, yeah. Comments below. Let me know what your favorite horror game is. Thank you so much for being here, guys. And I will see you next Monday. Till then, you guys have a fantastic week.